call that someone is blocked up again because the other giraffes are now blocked in the road. And there they are. <laughs> These grasslands, they stretch hundreds of miles through Eastern Africa. It is the super highway for millions of migrating animals, and it's home to animals like the giraffes we can already see ahead of us. It's also home to animals like the elephants. So this is the wild Africa that we're trying to preserve today. I'm sure you heard it a little bit from the other truck already, but again, giraffes fully grown are around 18 to 20 feet tall, which is taller than our truck. And baby giraffes at birth, they're already around six feet in height. <coughs> These kind of type of giraffe are the Maasai giraffe. They can be recognized by their irregular spots. And giraffes, they spend about 16 to 20 hours every day foraging for food. It doesn't leave a whole lot of time for this for them to sleep, but they don't really need it. Giraffes can get by with as little as 30 minutes of sleep a day, and that's not all at one point either. They'll take a couple of mini power naps throughout the day, and that's more than enough to suffice them. <coughs> and again, it's gonna be the adult giraffes ahead of us. The younger giraffes, about three o'clock, we should be able to get a better view of them as we continue to make our way around. And it does look like there's one more baby giraffe sitting down just behind the green truck. So we should be able to get a better view of that one as we continue to make our way around as well. In the meantime, ahead of us, there's gonna be some gray animals and those are the wildebeest. Wildebeest, they make up the largest land animal migration in the world. They will migrate for their entire lives following around the rain. And from the day they're born, they're already capable of walking and running. And by the end of the week, they'll be strong enough and fast enough to keep up with the entire herd. That's actually pretty common here in the savannah. Most of the prey animals have to be able to walk from day one in order to survive. But wildebeest really only get about 15 minutes to learn how to walk. If it takes them too, too much longer than that, the parents will end up leaving them. So they have to learn really fast. Back on our left-hand side, about 11 o'clock from us, over by the little rock cave, there are some animals taking a nap, and those will be the African wild dogs. They're also known as the painted dogs because of the color of their fur, and they are the most successful hunters in Africa. Basically, what they do to hunt, they'll continue to round up and chase down their prey until their prey tire from exhaustion and are no longer able to run away. And unlike other canines, they're not able to bark or howl, and instead they make chirping noises. They sound a little bit more like birds. Ooh, that's an animal. So we're going to be able to see the wildebeest on either side of us. There is another giraffe straight ahead. And all store left hand side, brown fur and long hooked horns in the back are the sable antelope. Their horns are going to be around five feet long, and rather than running away from predators, they use their horns to defend themselves. So they'll just form up a circular ring, and they'll fight off anyone that tries to come after them. The tall pillars of earth ahead of us, those are termite mounds. They can become as hard as concrete, and animals like to use them as scratching posts. Eventually, they do get worn down, and then smaller animals will stand on top of them, and they'll use them as lookout points to try and find any predators that might be hiding in the tall grass. Behind the giraffe on our left, those animals are the Patterson Eland, and they are some of the larger animals. Fully grown, the male, he's the one that's a little bit more gray in color. He can weigh up to around 2,000 pounds. The female's around 1,400 pounds. Despite their size, from a standing position, they can jump around six to eight feet straight up into the air. 
So that is a 2,000 pound animal that could jump over your head. the other giraffes on our right hand side. And that's gonna be one of the baby ones on our right. On our right hand side, these little antelope are the springbok and further back the big horns of the Ancoli cattle. The Ancoli, their horns and average are going to be around 4 feet long and about 21 inches around the base. They're also known as the Watusi cattle after the indigenous tribe that domesticated them. As for the springbok, fully grown, they're only about 3 feet tall, but they are some of the faster ones. They can reach speeds of around 55 miles an hour. And they can do that while prompting, so instead of straight up running, they start to bounce up and down as they move. Again, they can maintain their high speeds when they do that, and they clear about 12 feet with each jump. Yeah, and there's going to be an elephant up ahead. And Pumpkin's on our left. It's about 11 o'clock, as you can see the one walking by the trees. And then two, three more directly on my left hand side. Those are the mandrels, the most colorful monkeys in the world. The males can weigh up to about 100 pounds, and the females, they stay down close to 30. As for the elephant, it's going to be one of the African elephants. Largest land mammals in the world and fully grown. They can weigh up to around 13,000 pounds. For such large animals, they're really good at staying quiet. They have specialized padding on the bottoms of their feet that allows them to move almost completely silent despite their size. And on top of that, they can communicate with each other through rumbles that are so low in frequency, we can't hear them if they don't want us to. catch up to us a little bit over here on our way. side of us there's tusk marks in the red clay. Elephants they like to eat red clay. It provides valuable minerals for them. It's kind of like a giant vitamin. But sadly elephants are being poached for their tusks so in an effort to protect them we've invited animal researchers here. They're here studying the elephants vocal patterns so we can try and understand their needs in order to better help them survive. And one of the things that we've learned is that elephants really do not like bees. They'll warn each other if there's a beehive in the area, that way they can avoid it. And because of that, farmers in Africa now line up their crops with beehive posts. Helps keep the elephants away from farms and human settlements altogether, which is safer for everyone, and it also gives the farmers a new crop of honey.
right, just ahead of us is going to be a group of greater flamingo. The greater flamingo, they're the tallest and palest species of all the flamingo, and they get the pink color from the brine shrimp they eat, which is high in beta carotene. That's the same stuff. If we have too much of it, we'll end up turning orange. And if you ever see a group of flamingos like that, it's known as a flamboyance. vehicle. I'm going to try and get a better view once the other truck moves, but you can see there are two of them over to our right-hand side. Those are the white rhino. They can weigh up to around 5,000 pounds and they can charge around 35 miles an hour. So 2,000 pounds heavier than the black rhinos from earlier, but they're still just as fast. Their name, however, was a little bit of a mistranslation. Originally, they were known as the white rhino. White in Afrikaans means wide, and they were named after their wide, squarish mounts. When it was translated over to English, however, they mistook the word white for white and called them the white rhino instead. That's why their name doesn't match their color too well. Hey, guys. Unfortunately, the white rhino, like the black rhinos, they are communal animals. They like to live in groups and they don't mind other animal species or us as long as we give them their own space. Oh, and look carefully on our left hand side. About 9 o'clock from us, it might be a little hard to see, but there is a cheetah just laying down on the hill. There are two of them. Cheetah are the fastest land animals in the world. They can sprint around 60 to 70 miles an hour, and they can keep that pace for about a quarter of a mile. I see a third one about 11 o'clock from us, but that one's not in as good of a spot. Trees and everything are going to be in the way. Easy to see straight ahead of us there's a lion he's taking a nap right now but that's to be expected lions are nocturnal animals and they're most active during the evenings when it comes to hunting it's the females that'll do most of the hunting male's job is to stay back in order to defend the territory and protect the rest of the pride Over to our right hand side, There's some brown animals with crooked horns, those are the Pontebac, oh, and I can see the female lion here on the left. Try and get a little bit better view of her. Oh, oh there's another one. That works. There. On our left hand side, they're laying down by one of the trees about 10 o'clock. There are some warthogs. They kind of look like hairy rocks, but they're there, I promise. <laughs> warthogs are the largest burrowing mammals. Oftentimes, they will use another animal's burrow in order to start their own. 
Yeah, I can see the bomb to bock again to our right hand side and straight ahead of us there's a few more rhinos that are napping. Unfortunately they are facing away so it's mostly just the back end that you're going to see. But the Bantabak, well sadly, they can no longer be found in the wild. Between human agricultural expansion as well as being poached for their hides, they almost went extinct in the wild. At one point in time, only 17 left of them in the world. And they are doing well again on reserves, but it'll still be many years before we'll be able to properly reintroduce them back into the wild. are all amazing but we do have to play a part in protecting them and keeping them safe things as simple as recycling old electronics can have a huge impact electronics they often contain a material known as coltan and coltan's primarily mined in these animals homes so by recycling we can reduce the amount of coltan that we need thereby stop invading the homelands but we are at the end of the reserve so i'll be dropping you off over at the nearest warden's post Take the time now, look around you, see if anything might have fallen out of your pockets. And if there are any wilderness explorers on board, you've been riding the Simba 1. That is S-I-M-B-A and the number 1. Here in Harambe, we don't like to say goodbye, it's a little sad, so instead we say Quaharini, and Quaharini means to go well. So, Quaharini, everyone, I hope y'all had a fantastic time and have a wild rescue day here in Animal Kingdom.